So the first thing I'd like to make clear for this video is which continuity I'll be referring to for this. As most of you guys already know, when Disney bought Lucasfilm back in 2014, most of the old expanded universe materials became non-canon or what is officially referred to as Legends or Star Wars Vintage. However, a lot of the important materials pertaining to this topic are ones that are canon to both continuities such as the first six films, the shows like The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, the parts of the adult novelizations that are congruent with the films, republished works like the junior novels and anything else that accurately describes the events of the films according to Matt Martin, the head of the Lucasfilm story group. Because of this, most of what I will say should apply to both continuities, however, if there's something exclusive to one or another, I'll make sure to make that clear for you guys. With that out of the way, for this I'll primarily be comparing Anakin from the events of Revenge of the Sith before his turn to the dark side to Luke Skywalker from during Return of the Jedi. However, I will make sure to talk a little bit about how both of their stronger forms compare to each other, but again, I'll be primarily sticking to information that applies to both continuities. Before getting directly into the video, I'd appreciate if you left a like on it and subscribed as well as I plan to do more Star Wars content in the future. So first, we should go over just how strong Anakin and Luke are in the Force, and this all starts off with the birth of Anakin. As stated numerous times in the films, as well as many supplementary guides and interviews, Anakin, due to being conceived by the Force itself, has the highest levels of Force energy ever measured. Having a midichlorian count of over 20,000 per cell, this is the reason Anakin had the potential to become the strongest Force wielder ever, due to the fact that one's potential in the Force is directly determined by their midichlorian count, and this is why Anakin and Luke's actual level of might is referred to as strength in the Force, or Force power, rather than Force potential. Now this alone does not mean Anakin actually was the strongest force wielder ever, as it just speaks to how strong he could become, and as far as we know, there are not many examples of him actually reaching his full potential in either continuity. However, while he never reached his full potential, he was still incredibly strong. It is stated numerous times in the Revenge of the Sith novelizations that Anakin was the strongest Jedi around during Episode 3, with Mace Windu and Palpatine both saying as much and Yoda remarking that Anakin was way stronger in the Force than any Jedi he had ever known, which the author of the junior novelization confirmed in an interview did include Yoda himself. This is also consistent with and supports multiple statements indicating Anakin was the strongest Jedi in over a thousand years and potentially of all time with the Force Awakens visual dictionary even saying as much. However, despite this, his almost unrivaled raw power and Force potential Anakin doesn't display too much skill or versatility with types of force abilities and how he actually employs them outside of Legends comics. While Anakin possesses some of the best feats of raw strength with telekinesis such as force pushes, force crushes, and chokes, he doesn't display many abilities outside of this and most of the time when he does, such as with abilities like force scream and beast control, the applications are very circumstantial and he only resorts to these abilities because he needs to in those situations. While Anakin's arsenal leaves much to be desired, his force augmentation or force valor is top tier, with multiple sources citing that Anakin is the physically fastest and strongest Jedi of his era. While Luke's force potential isn't as high as Anakin's, he is largely considered to be the runner up in this category in the verse, alongside Leia with George Lucas saying as much in many interviews, and the novels indicating Luke's force potential easily exceeded Darth Vader's and even Palpatine which is the main reason Palpatine feared Luke being trained as a Jedi. Luke, unlike his father, also dedicates himself to much more study and practice of the Force abilities, and while they display similar feats of strength in areas like telepathy and telekinesis, Luke displays much more skill than Anakin with these abilities. For example, while Anakin can often be seen manipulating large ships or objects with his telekinesis, Luke displays the same power, however, with much more skill, like when he effortlessly forced the TIE Fighters to crash into each other. This was numerous TIE Fighters to keep in mind. Luke also relies on technical abilities like telepathy much more, whereas Anakin emphasizes his force augmentation and other abilities that let him showcase his raw power. However, Luke also has impressive showings in Force Valor with Return of the Jedi novelization indicating Luke's capabilities with the force augmentation were beyond Vader's and Palpatine's. 
In terms of how strong Luke actually was by Return of the Jedi, it is noted multiple times by Darth Vader during his fight with Luke in the Return of the Jedi novelization that Luke seemed to be just as strong as, if not possibly stronger than Anakin in the Force before his turn to the dark side, and both notice that Palpatine starts to pick up on this and starts growing fearful of Luke, and this is also supported by everything I've gone over prior. So ultimately, while Anakin had greater potential and has some of the better showings of raw power, Luke by the time of Return of the Jedi is clearly around that same level, so it's hard to declare the category in favor of either combatant. However, since Luke displays more skill than Anakin while exhibiting similar levels of power, if it comes down to a battle of the force, Luke can most likely find a way to overcome Anakin before he could ever overpower him at this point. The next area of importance in this fight is how strong and skilled both combatants are in terms of lightsaber combat, and this area turns out to be really straightforward depending on how you choose to interpret certain things. So with that being said, we'll start with Luke. As many people know, Luke fought Darth Vader in Episode 6, and this fight has always been a very heated topic of debate among Star Wars fans, with many people often being very quick to pick up on and dismiss Luke's showings in this fight. A lot of people will often try to do this by arguing Darth Vader was nerfed or conflicted here due to his uncertainty about killing Luke, however, this can be questioned to what degree Vader was weaker in this situation, if at all. Especially since, due to a lot of the context surrounding this fight, that often goes unnoticed. For one, Luke can actually be seen holding back for most of the encounter, refusing to even fight Vader outside of defending himself until he threatened to turn Leia to the dark side. And this is especially ironic in light of all the apologizing people seem to do for Vader here, despite many sources like the script itself confirming Luke held the advantage for most of the fight. Secondly, Vader in the novelization acknowledges that Luke is his strongest opponent yet, and this would mean Luke is superior to individuals who can already compete with Darth Vader in both continuities, like Starkiller from The Force Unleashed and Ahsoka in Star Wars Rebels. Luke is also said many times by guides, articles, and magazines from both continuities to have become Vader's equal as a lightsaber duelist regardless of any irrelevant circumstances surrounding the fight. Luke's greatest showing here was by far his raw talent with the lightsaber, which allowed him to effectively mirror Vader's fighting style in an even battle after only fighting him twice before. While Anakin vs Vader in terms of power and the force is contentious, this is the last thing I want this video to turn into and most people on both sides of the argument will acknowledge Darth Vader is the superior lightsaber duelist with many guides from both continuities indicating Darth Vader by the time of the original trilogy was a better or stronger lightsaber duelist than Anakin was even at his peak. Also refining his fighting style to overcome the weaknesses he suffered on Mustafar, with many sources even calling Vader an unparalleled or unbeatable lightsaber duelist until Luke emerged onto the scene. While Luke by extension should be much more skilled in this area than Anakin due to being a match for Vader, Anakin is also potentially noticeably faster than Luke, physically that is. It is painfully obvious just by watching the films that Darth Vader, while being capable of keeping up with Luke in their fight, even with a speed disadvantage, is much slower and less agile than he was as Anakin due to his clunky cybernetic suit. In Legends, this becomes apparent when we see Darth Vader is compared to Yoda in speed, who is, as I've gone over, slower than Anakin. However, the gap is arguably much bigger in canon at least when referring to early Vader, as the Lords of the Sith novel states that when Palpatine fought alongside Darth Vader on Ryloth, he was able to keep up with him using just a fraction of his power in the Force. If we use power in the Force as our metric for Force augmentation, that Vader is stated to have grown numerous times after this point, however, it's questionable if he ever reached the level of Palpatine in this regard, since in Legends he was only around the same level as him in power during the Force at his peak, whereas in current canon he was always getting put in his place by Palpatine in the most embarrassing ways even without Force Lightning. So while it's questionable just how much faster Anakin is than Darth Vader depending on what route you go down, it should still be a noticeable advantage for Anakin in this fight. So while Luke is a more skilled duelist, Anakin definitely again has the raw strength on his side. But since getting a decisive verdict in this area would be entirely dependent upon which continuity you subscribe to, this part could go either way. The next portion to go over would be Luke and Anakin's fighting styles to see just how they would interact. Most of the information for the seven forms of the lightsaber combat comes from the Jedi Path, which was originally a Legends book that was later republished multiple times after 2015 and reintroduced into the current canons. With the description of the forms remaining the same when carry over, 
the other canon materials like Star Wars, the Clone Wars, or Rebels. So this section will apply to both continuities in its entirety. Anakin and Luke both use a hybrid fighting style built around Form 5, which is all about the principle of turning an enemy's attack against them and encouraging a fluid, dual-centric fighting style that centers around using raw strength to beat the enemy into submission. As I said before, Anakin isn't as skilled as Darth Vader or Luke with Form 5. He's still acknowledged by Count Dooku as being the greatest wielder of the style he'd ever seen. Unlike Luke, Anakin is also skilled in the other half of Form 5, Sheehan. The other half of Form 5 is geared more toward blast deflection and unorthodox grips. However, Anakin uses it for his stance and saber spins, which helps him immediately transition from blocks to overhead strikes. Anakin also incorporates personalized versions of Form 4 Ataru that emphasizes force augmentation and acrobatics, which allows him to overcome Form 5's main weakness, its traditional lack of mobility. Anakin, due to having almost unrivaled endurance, is also practically immune to Form 4's main weakness. It's typically very taxing on a user's stamina. However, this also contributes to Anakin's arrogance in combat. As I said before, Luke's fighting style also centers around Form 5, Dimso. However, he approaches lightsaber combat in a much less aggressive manner than his father. Luke chooses to supplement this with Form 3, Suresu, a defensive fighting style he mastered from Obi-Wan's journal while training on Tatooine, which uses tight, efficient sweeps and movements to block any blaster bolts or lightsaber strikes. And this form is especially good for those in tune with the Force and is a good means to stall opponents. Luke also incorporates and is a notable user of Form 1, the most basic form of lightsaber combat taught to all beginners. However, this form won't be very useful against Anakin outside of its random and unpredictable combos due to its simplistic nature. So while Anakin is clearly more adept as a lightsaber combatant offensively, Luke clearly has the defensive edge due to his use of Form 3. However, we should note Anakin's acrobatic fighting style would make it fairly easy to exploit his speed advantage and Luke's lack of mobility, which again just further contributes to what I said before about a lightsaber duel going either way between these two. So lastly, before we conclude the video, I want to touch a bit on their stronger forms, which in this case would be Anakin turned to the dark side and carried out Operation Nightfall, or what is commonly referred to as Nightfall Vader. For Luke, this includes his usage of Dark Raid or Dark Side Force Augmentation, as well as Grand Master Luke. Many people already know this, but I'll just touch on it quickly now so I never have to ever again. Nightfall Vader during the Temple Massacre shouldn't be confused with the Anakin that fought Obi-Wan on Mustafar, and it stated many times that Anakin's confliction and confusion made him weaker on Mustafar, and this along with Anakin's arrogance, the unforgiving terrain, and Obi-Wan's familiarity with his fighting style are the only reasons Obi-Wan survived that fight on Mustafar, and is not a valid way to downplay Nightfall Vader, especially with the most recent novel from 2021, Skywalker, A Family at War, even going as far as to say while Anakin was cold and calculated during Nightfall, his dark rage subsided on Mustafar and he was left with feelings of paranoia and self-loathing, which is the best way to sum it up, with the novelization even using a metaphor of a dragon within Anakin that he slays when turning, stripping his emotions of the power to control him. But it later re-emerged on Mustafar. With that out of the way, it stated many times at many different points before and during the massacre that Anakin was actively growing much stronger in the Force and at his peak and is stated many times to have become the strongest dark side wielder, Sith Lord, and enemy of the Jedi Order ever. Depending on how seriously you take these statements, this could mean Nightfall Vader is easily more powerful than Dark Rage Luke and arguably also enemies that Grandmaster Luke couldn't overcome in either continuity like Darth Krayt, Abeloth, and the juiced up Darth Sidious we see in The Rise of Skywalker. It's unclear if Anakin developed many new force abilities as a result of this, with the novelizations indicating that he can use force blasts of energy now, and some legends material implying he may be able to use force lightning at this stage. Anakin's fighting style is also said to become much more brutal and aggressive than before, with some legends novels even confirming that he began to use Form 7 Juyo, the most deadly and unpredictable lightsaber form. Even if you exclude this confirmation, Anakin basically uses Juyo at this point in all but the name, since Juyo itself is just about using your rage as fuel for power in combat, which Anakin already does a little too well. 
While there isn't much specific information for Luke to go over that's relevant here, we still have enough to reach a conclusion depending on which Luke we're talking about. When giving into the temptations of the dark side and channeling his rage, Luke was able to brutalize, disarm, and defeat Darth Vader to the point Palpatine even feared what Luke would go on to do before he came back to his senses and surrendered. While with this rage, Luke should easily be able to overwhelm Nightfall, Vader, and lightsaber combat, the same can't be said about his power in the Force. Grandmaster Luke, however, is a different story, and it varies depending on whether you go with canon or legends. In Legends of the Return of the Jedi, Luke continues his training after establishing the Jedi Order and becoming Grand Master, now having mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat, as well as at least 13 other fighting styles and force abilities like massive force walls, invisible force attacks, new energy attacks, and even force lightning. In canon, however, Luke's development is far much more confusing. While there may be direct ways to argue he grew stronger after events of Return of the Jedi, it's never directly confirmed at any point. And if you think the earlier statement from The Force Awakened includes Grandmaster Luke, then he may have even regressed to a point where he was no longer at the level of Jedi Anakin after cutting off and momentarily re-establishing his connection to The Force. However, it is still stated he continued his studies and expanded upon his existing skills. Unlike Legends though, we don't get any specifics as to what this means for his arsenal and fighting style outside of him learning to become a force ghost. The only noticeable change in Luke's fighting style with a lightsaber later in his life is his incorporation of Form 6 Naimon, a balanced form that borrows principles from all other forms of lightsaber combat. However, its biggest advantage is its encouragement of the use of force abilities in lightsaber combat, which gives Luke an opportunity to chain one of his deadly force abilities when fighting against Anakin. While this video has spanned many different areas and explored multiple different possibilities going into this fight, as I hinted before, I think the question of who wins comes down to skill and wisdom versus raw strength and talent. And there's already an excellent answer given to us by Pablo Hidalgo in the Legends book Star Wars Head to Head, which states that if a fight between Anakin and Luke were to happen, Luke would win, but only due to Anakin's lack of control. Time and time again, it's been highlighted that Anakin's biggest weaknesses are his arrogance, his overcommitment to offense, and his lightsaber combat, on top of his inability to control his emotions most of the time. I believe with his similar power in the force and superior skills, Luke can easily exploit these shortcomings and overcome his father, showing at the end of the day he is the better Jedi. Again, this is by no means a clear verdict, and Anakin's raw power, especially at his peak, is part of what makes it so contentious within the community at almost literally two decades later. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more Star Wars stuff or content in general, just like leave a comment or something like that. Obviously, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you liked it and subscribe as well. And um, other than that, have a nice day.